Hello friends, in this video we're going to be reviewing Exposure X7. There's been a lot of requests for me to do this video, especially when I did my top 5 raw editors for 2021. Some people asked me why I did not include Exposure X7. Uh, honestly speaking, I actually never heard about it. So I was very glad to hear some people point it out. I'm always eager to try out new software. So let's get right into Exposure X7. So one thing nice about Exposure X7, as you can see here, is, is it, it is a free software and it boasts of a lot of features, which we're going to be trying out in a moment. This does not require any subscription, so you own this forever. Currently, it's around, um, around 150 USD, but if you wait throughout the year, you might see this at around 100 USD. That being said, uh, there are a lot of competitors at this price range. So we're gonna take a look and see whether it is worth it. Okay, so let's start off with importing photos. Importing photos with Exposure X7 is pretty easy. I'm just gonna choose the menu here, All right? So I'm just going to choose something from my thumb drive. So as you can see here, there are a lot of features. It loads pretty fast and the interface itself is pretty smooth. Yeah, so it is pretty smooth. As you can see here, you can adjust the size of the thumbnails, which is really good. So I usually like the thumbnails to be a little bit bigger, like so. You can also do filtering here. When it comes to browsing, of course, you can scroll through this if you wish. You could also open up uh, panels, similar to the way Capture One does it. They have like a triangle here where you can hide panels, like so. So there's a bottom panel here, which will allow you to sort for ratings and the like. So you can rate it just like in Lightroom via using a star rating or the colors and the like, and it filters and that works. And it's also nice that as you you hover over this images, it gives you some nice EXIF data. Let's go ahead and try out its, its adjustments. So we're gonna first start off with the photo I typically use for raw adjustments. Just double click that and we're into the editing mode. What I like about this photo is it is very clear which parts are in shadow, which parts are in highlight. So what you want in a raw photo editor is for it to detect the tones properly. So here in this right panel, you have the basic adjustments. Right now it's gonna be global adjustments. Let's reduce the highlights of the sky first. So what I'm seeing here is once you drag the highlights, it, it is hitting this watery portion here. It is not actually what I would prefer. I would prefer it just hitting this bright part, this highlight portion, because this is really in the mid-tone section. Here, the blue water here is really in the mid-tone to shadow section. Uh, but for a cloud part, I think it's doing a, a very good job for that, okay? So let's just reduce that a little bit. Okay, and then the shadows itself. Shadows, it is quite a bit more targeted. The only thing I am noticing here is it is reducing the contrast of the image. What I like about this adjustment is it does not touch the sky. Uh, one thing I, I can comment about the shadow adjustment as well is, as you can see, I'm already at the end here. I'm already at maximum, yet it has not been brightened enough. A bit too conservative in the way it's brightening the shadows. Okay, so, Let's look at a JPEG just for, if in case you need to edit a JPEG image, how would that look like? Would, be there, would there be any difference? Let's just reduce the highlights here. So you can see for the JPEG, it has a lot less data to work with. And you can see the main problem with it is, it is actually not hitting the, the highlights, right? It's just, it's hitting the shadows in the middle. So that's one flaw in the, the processing of it. I'm not sure why it cannot detect this part. It's clear as day that this is a, a highlight. And then in shadows, okay, so the shadows, you can see it's a lot smarter. It is hitting the the rock formation, which is the one in shadow, and it's doing so pretty well, right? But again, it's still a little bit too conservative. It's Again, we're already maxed out. So the better raw editors would actually be able to brighten this even further. Yeah, the blacks don't really do a great job because that will reduce a lot more contrast, though it is targeting it nicely. So uh, again, let's look at another image just to be very clear so you get a feel for its performance. So again, if we move the shadows here, again, again nicely targeted, but again, it is fairly conservative. It doesn't really uh, brighten it enough. And then the highlights here, does, here it does a much better job of reducing the highlights. Okay. Now, so those are basically the tone adjustments and those are, I would feel, the most important thing about a raw editor is how well the, the raw adjustments work. Okay, so let's just move on to some of the other features. Okay, so here let's try out its HSL 
selection. It just is an important feature for where raw editors can actually enhance specific colors in an image. So as you can see here, what if I drag the the red slider to enhance it, it does a pretty good job of okay. So for here, let's say you want to adjust the blues, you see that it works pretty well. Okay. So another thing we would we always want to do in a photo, especially with iPhone photos or many types of photos is uh, you want to remove the haze or make something pop a little bit more like in this case it is it is very flat a very flat image so i always want to try out what you call its haze adjustment so let's try its haze ad adjustment uh, what a haze adjustment is supposed to do is look at the areas where it lacks contrast and lacks color and sort of make it add a nice amount of contrast and color to those flat areas of an image. So for the haze level, if I reduce it, so here you increase the haze level, haze removal by decreasing it, right? So uh, my main issue is it's not focusing enough on the sky area. It's focusing here on the shadowy area. So it makes the, the parts of the images uh, look dark. So maybe what you would want to do here is you would want to, again, add a layer, okay? And so what you can do when you add a layer, just click the layer and then make sure to make sure that the brush is clicked. And then you can just use the tab key to increase the size. I'm just going to drag over the, the sky area here because this is the only part I want the haze to work. Okay, so let me just get rid of this mask here. So let's just try that again. And let's try to get the haze level here. There you go. So now it looks better. So the layers feature of Exposure X7 is pretty good in this case because you could focus your adjustments. If the global adjustments do not meet your expectations or do not meet your requirements, then you can focus on certain areas with you know, this layers implementation. And I do like that the layers implementation is very simple. So another feature that's available to Exposure X7 is a lens correction. And so here you can actually do some correction here. Uh, what's nice about this is it can actually detect the maker and the model and then it can apply the correction based on the characteristics of the lens. So as you can see here, as I, I move this around, right, you can see it can you can remove barrel distortion or, or different types of distortion in this lens. Of course, it also features the, the crop tool if you want to, if you want to uh, do a, a bit of rotation on this. It does work as well, right? So another feature uh, built into Exposure X7, which might be useful. If I add a layer and I click on the mask, you have a few options to do the selection. The one problem of Exposure X7 is its uh, masking brush does not include any edge detection. So you might have seen me review this before. I think this is a very important feature and very few raw editors implement this feature properly. So as you can see here in this brush, there is no edge detection. You have to be very careful in your brushing. However, Exposure X7 does support another way of doing precise selections and this is through this selection option here basically this will allow you to uh, draw points here which can be made into a polygon and it works pretty well right so as you can see here I've drawn the polygon just by putting the points in and if you're satisfied with that then that is the selection okay so once you have that selection you can you can apply the adjustments so if you like that methodology of selection then I think uh, exposure x7 does a good job of it as for myself I would still prefer that they implement some sort of edge detection in their brush that is a far superior way of making the selection okay so let me try one more thing here which is the bokeh so this is the bokeh feature they have um, okay this one is not very impressive because I've seen other apps uh, do the same thing Okay, so let me just do a conclusion. So after reviewing Exposure X7, what are my final comments? Well, I do like its fast performance. I do like its comprehensive feature set. And I do like its implementation of layers, which is uh, quite intuitive. However, there are a few major shortcomings which prevent me from recommending the product. So the first thing is the tone adjustments don't work as well as others in this price range. So the shadow adjustment is much too conservative. I, d I didn't give it anything uh, exceptionally difficult, but it does have a problem of brightening shadows. For me, that is an issue, especially when you take photos at night or you take photos in the sun, you're gonna get a lot of these problems. And if it brightens only to that extent, that will take you a long time to fix. And you have to remember that I am editing a raw file and it has all the data. So the data is there, but somehow their algorithms are not able to, to 
properly expose the the shadows and the highlights as well. Um, it doesn't do it intuitively enough or effectively enough. The second problem I have with this is it doesn't have any edge detection when it does masks. And that, as I've mentioned many times before, that makes refined adjustments a lot more problematic and a lot more tedious than it should be. So the reason you pay money for you know something like Lightroom or uh, Capture One is the quality of its uh, masking. So you can get very precise masks. Um, their price point as well at 150 USD, 100 to 150 USD. DxO can actually do the masking with edge detection. So at this price point, I will have to say I, I won't recommend it because there are other competitors with better feature set where the feature set works a little bit better than Exposure X7. However, I have to say it has a lot of potential. I'm excited to see what they bring with Exposure X8 and I hope they correct all of these issues here because they have a very good foundation. Well, that's all I have to say about Exposure X7. Do try it out. If you're interested, it has a free trial, free 30-day trial. And thank you for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye for now.